VP of membership for the chamber. Just a few little housekeeping notes before we get started today. Um, please note that this event will be recorded and distributed to our attendees and made available on our YouTube page. And please also make sure that you put your company or business in your name and mute yourself while you are not talking. And before I hand it over to David, I do want to thank our sponsors today, Valero and Dignity Health St. Mary Medical Center. So thank you so much to our wonderful sponsors who make these events possible. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to you, David, our LBYP president, David Koch. Thanks, Natalie. And thanks everyone for coming. <laughs> uh, really, don't forget to change your, your name, to put your company name in there. I'm sure you love your job and you probably wouldn't do it on a volunteer basis. So we're here to network. We're here to give each other business. You know, we're in the business of, of doing business. So uh, we're going to kick this off. Um, and, you know, do, doing our best to network in a virtual uh, scenario is, is always fun. So we're going to do um, what what drink best describes your personality. And uh, I'll go first. Uh, it's it's beer. That's that's uh, very near and dear to my heart. And, and the reason why is because uh, two words to describe the way I like my beer uh, are often used to describe me. And that's cold and bitter. So, uh, Natalie, you want to go next? Sure, I'll go next. Um, admittedly, I did come up with this question, so I got a little bit of a head start. But um, my drink would definitely be a vodka soda because I am bubbly and easy to drink, but not fun hungover. All right. Um, how about Marilyn? Um, I would say that I'm more like a michelada. Um, mostly because it's delicious, so. <laughs> All right. How about, uh, how about Matt? Linda Hey, guys. Um, you know, uh, so I am anything fermented. Uh, I, <laughs> I appreciate, uh, the process of maturation. <laughs> Chris? <laughs> uh, well, uh, fermentation... Uh, Fermentation is, I'll leave that for Matt, who's our brewer, and I'll, I'll do an intro for him in a minute. Um, but for me, I think I, I gravitate towards um, lighter lager style beers, um, Mexican lagers, Calexican lager, that's a, that's a trusted gut special coming up. Um, but something a little bit light and clean and crisp kind of describes my, my new haircut. Nice. Nigel, how about you? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say Bloody Mary because I love brunch. Breakfast and brunch is my favorite meal. And frankly, I don't know why those are not served at all hours of the day. <laughs> and I don't uh, know why they're, why they're uh, stuck in the morning hours. So I'll, I'll tell you why. Because if it's, if it's, uh, if you order a Bloody Mary at, at like 1230 at a bar, <laughs> the bartender's going to punch you in the face. <laughs> they can they can open a can of tomato juice it's not That's it's not <laughs> nice um how about christine i don't know i'm thinking about it i guess i'm kind of like a tropical drink because i'm sweet but i don't know i don't really like those drinks i want to be like a glass of red wine but i don't know if i'm bold enough for that but <laughs> i'll stick with the fruity drink all right christopher mitchell so my favorite drink, we're talking alcohol, yeah? Doesn't have to be alcohol. Oh, okay. Well, um, my favorite drink, alcoholic, is um, silver tequila with pineapple and lime, because that's just family drink, you know? All right. Um, Jonathan Bruckner. All right. So uh, I actually don't drink anymore but uh i would compare myself to soju because too much of me and you will get jacked up <laughs> just like soju if you know you know if you've had soju if just yeah that's it thanks uh josh domingo yeah i thought long and hard about this david i think i'm a bar mat shot because i'm crazy <laughs> And it's going to be a lot of fun. And there's definitely a party going on when we're, when we're hanging out. But you're going to regret it tomorrow. Wait, 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 wait. What's the game of that bar mat shot? Does anybody know that? At Jersey Turnpike. It's right across the dirty river over here. <laughs> I've heard it called a Rambo. I, I've heard it called anything but the kitchen sink. Kitchen sinks. 
been used on it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And the Jersey Turnpike, that's new to me. That's a Northeast one. Uh, you know, nobody, all the surrounding states uh, here, uh, we're obviously, I'm sitting in Philadelphia. Look at Jersey as the, uh, the armpit of America. Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm hey, 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 watch your mouth, watch your mouth. I'm, Jersey I'm just girl right here. repeating what I read in a book. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. That's Atira, funny. What's your, what's, uh, what drink describes you the best? I'm sorry, what was the question? I totally missed that. I was on, I was on what, the call. What, what drink, it doesn't have to be alcoholic, but what drink would describe your personality? Oh, uh, I'm moody, so it really depends. <laughs> It depends um, if I'm feeling fresh and clean and, and, you know, just full of life, just some plain old H2O. Uh, if I'm, if I'm feeling relaxed, it's some wine. If I'm feeling a little, you know, a little uh, wild, maybe uh, some tequila. All right. Oh, I have not had tequila in a while. I can't All right. Any, any uh, alcoholic beverages right now. Um, Naki? Uh, yes. Uh, so it all, I guess, depends on the setting, but, uh, uh, so if I'm, if I'm sitting down for about to eat some dinner or something out at a bar and I'm kind of being fancy, it'll be an old fashioned. And, uh, if I'm at, uh, if I'm just hanging out with the boys, it's probably an IPA. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, Natalie, Natalie Rutledge. Hello. Um, I said a whiskey sour, I think the last time I got this, um, my last name's, well, my maiden name is sour, um, but whiskey's pretty smooth and it's sweet. So it's a little combination of the two. Smooth, sweet, and sour. How about <laughs> you, Naveen? Uh, well, uh, I would like to compare myself with, with a red wine relaxing in the middle of a lot of uh, uh, complications and confusion. <laughs> I want to be relaxing. Yeah. All right, Thank Oscar. You. Um, Just make it easy. Uh, just a cold beer works for me, a, preferably a lager. I'm easy, so that's a cold beer. Nice, page one. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, probably sick with the the beer as comparing myself uh to be maybe a little bit more specific uh that could be smooth and crisp i like to think but in reality i'm probably more sour uh than i realize <laughs> so that would probably be a nice uh, sour beer for myself to be just grab this nice uh rachel um maybe like a hellas beer just like i have those like german roots and pretty smooth and easy to get along with Nice. Robert? Currently drinking a hazy IPA, but I think the drink that best describes my personality would be an Irish coffee. Hello. I can relate to the duality of being creative and jittery and slow and oh. tired all at the same time. I suppose. <laughs> all right, I can appreciate that. I think I got everyone because the guest list is always bouncing around. Did I miss anybody? All right, well, hey, um, Great job. Uh, I'm gonna we, missed, we, missed, uh, we missed one person, David. Uh, oh. Katie, I believe. Oh, Katie's back. All right, Katie. You know the question? Uh, I would like to say that I think I'm a mojito because I'm sweet and I like to uh, mix things up a little bit because it's a muddled drink. So I think that describes me. Thanks. Nice. Um, so I'm going to kick it over to um, Chris Garrett, founder and managing member of Trusted Gut. He's got um, uh, some, some a cool video for us. So take it away, Chris. Yeah. Well, thanks first, David, Natalie, and the whole group for uh, for inviting us to to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Chris Garrett. I'm the CEO and founder of Trusted Gut. Trusted Gut is a brand new brewery uh, that will be opening uh, this fall in Belmont Heights, right near the Attic Restaurant on Broadway in Redondo. Uh, we are about, uh, the brewery itself is 13,000 square feet. So we have about 8,000 square feet of manufacturing, uh, you know, with a canning line for off-premise distribution. Um, and then about 5,000 square feet 
which is pretty large uh, for our tasting room and retail uh, concepts. Our, our, our brand itself is dedicated to wellness in all forms. We're a single brewery with a trio of craft beverages. So we not only produce beer, great beer styles, and we brought our, our, uh, our master, I'll call him the master of creation, uh, head of, head of brewery, brewery recipes, Matt Lindemuth, and I'll, I'll describe Matt in a minute. Um, but, you know, we do not only great craft beer styles, but we do uh, hard seltzers. Um, and we actually use real fruit juice in the hard seltzer, so it's different than your White Claw and your um, your Truly out there. We actually have some better for you beverage uh, and, and benefits that come along with the drinks. And then we do hard hard kombucha. So those three liquids uh, create what we call the trusted triad, and that is uh, that goes along with our name, Trusted Gut. Like I said, we'll be uh, we'll be opening this fall right there at uh, Broadway and Redondo, and we're we're really excited to serve the community of Long Beach. Um, and I am personally from Long Beach. Uh, I grew up in Long Beach. I'm actually sitting on the peninsula right now uh, in my my home with my family. And uh, my my career goes back. Um, I was uh, after college. I got recruited uh, to work at Quicksilver, the clothing brand, and I've always loved to build brands and and be involved in uh, you know in, in in decision making and whatnot. And um, and I had a, a huge entrepreneurial spirit as a as a young guy. And and you know after I left Quicksilver, we decided my family and I decided that uh, the, our next adventure would be our own business. And so we kicked off this idea using our trusted gut. We kicked off this idea of starting a, uh, a beverage company, and, and here we are. I brought along our, um, like I said, our, our head of recipe creation, Matt Lindemuth. And Matt, if you're out there, maybe you can uh, kind of talk a little bit about your background a little bit and, and how you came to be and how you came to partner with us. Uh, thanks, Chris. Um, thank you guys for having us on. Um, Chris and I have known each other for, for a very long time. Uh, I spent... Uh, Spent a long career in the action sports industry, um, skate and snowboard. And when I was uh, 13 years old, uh, my parents sort of like sh shoved me on my way because I had some opportunities to endorse some companies and travel the, the globe. So uh, some older, uh, some of the old, my older peers, like Chris, for example, um, sort of uh, showed me how to travel the world. And um, throughout that uh, 20 years of traveling, I... Um, got uh, had the opportunity to be exposed to a lot of uh, culture and good quality beer prior to knowing that there was this craft beer revolution that existed um uh, so this was early 90s mid 90s um and well underage here in the u.s i was getting to enjoy um what was just a common beer in um throughout europe and and the rest of the world and uh when uh, when that career came to an end for me as an athlete, I um, I came home to Philadelphia, which is where I sit today. Uh, it's where I spent my year in uh, quarantine, and um, uh, we, I did the same as what uh, Chris is doing right now. I, I started up a, a small brewery, uh, went to Cornell and did some uh, brewing technology courses, and uh, just kind of dove in. I was a homebrew hobbyist. Um, that just uh, had, uh, I needed, uh, I needed, again, with that entrepreneurial spirit, I just, I needed something that I was passionate about, um, much like I was uh, through the athlete years. And um, the craft beer world has uh, had a distinct camaraderie amongst the, and throughout the industry that was very familiar to me. So uh, I dove in head first. And uh, now I have three brewery locations here in Pennsylvania. And, um, getting ready to head out west here in about a month to help get everything built out in Long Beach. Perfect. And Matt, Matt is, like I said, and Matt described, he's an ex-professional uh, athlete turned home brewer, turned brewery open, uh, owner. He actually has won several awards for his, his, uh, his, his different uh, creations, including a gold medal at the Great American Beer Festival, which is pretty much like the Olympics of, uh, of beer making. So, Matt was being a little conservative on his own uh, introduction, but he, we're, we're real lucky to have him. Like Matt said, I've known Matt for many, many years. And, and so we brought Matt out um, to partner with us and really head up, head up uh, recipe creation and brewery operations. We have three brewers 
Uh, we do three different liquids, as I said. So Matt, Matt is really helping out a lot on the beer side. Um, we have a, a hard seltzer, uh, a brewer that uh, was the head brewer at Gordon Beers for many years, and he's come in and brewing our uh, our, hard, our hard seltzer. And then we have a, a a brewer that's been brewing since the early 90s, and he's brewing kombuchas, among other things, for us. So um, we brought Matt out this past summer uh, to do one of our first beers and first beer releases, a collaboration with the Belmont Brewing Company. And so I think, Natalie, you have a, a little video to show the group uh, about that collaboration, and, and I'll let you take it from there. All righty, here we go. Hopefully the sound is working still. Being a newcomer isn't a bad thing. Can we hear it? Yeah. We didn't want to build a place for 10 years, 15 years. We, we wanted to build an institution. I came in with Chris and, and Trusted Gut, and we immediately get introduced to BBC. We have been here in Long Beach forever. Strawberry Blonde has been one of our staples for a long time, 25 years or more. We're taking a, a, a classic beer of theirs, and we're throwing some new progressive twists to it. Blackwell, he is making their best-selling beers over and over and over again. He is an absolute beast. Blackwell, come on in. No, it's Mr. Blackwell to you. The plan that Matt came up with to upgrade this classic Long Beach beer. We are using real, organic, quality products to make quality beers. Brewers get together and talk about something that a lot of people think is kind of gross. We talk about yeast. Well, I'm excited to bring the Philly Sour Yeast out to you guys. And so it's an all natural strain straight from Philly. It's actually from a, an oak tree in a graveyard that neighbors the university. As far as like what I've heard about most East Coasters, he's actually a pretty cool guy, you know? <laughs> the local beer scene here in Long Beach has really bloomed. I've been living in the neighborhood for about 11 years. So to see the uh, collaboration with the BBC and Trusted Gut is extremely important. When we were approached by Trusted Gut, you know, it kind of felt like the old days when people helped each other. And, and that, that's, uh, that feels right. The fact that we get to be a part of writing the next phase of history with them in being the newest brewery here is pretty incredible. Uh, Chris, you're in the frame. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> okay. Oh. oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was a that was a little marketing video we put together uh, for the collaboration, and just like most of what we try to do with with Trusted Gut is we like to aspire to, to be a little bit more purposeful in everything we do. And so, as I said in the video, that was a, you know, I felt like I could pay homage to, to uh, the BBC. They're the oldest brew pub in, in LA County. Um, we're the newest brewery. So the concept of that video was old and new. Um, hopefully that came through. We took their, their old recipe, their number one recipe of, you know, the strawberry blonde, and we added this great Philly yeast that Matt brought into the picture and, and uh, kind of made it this, uh, this brotherly love of, of West and, you know, East Coast and West Coast flavor, and it, it sold out. So, you know, there's a couple, like I said, that it's available on draft right now at the attic, uh, but the, the can release and, and, and the batches we put out have, have, have quickly dispersed. So, you know, it just shows, uh, it shows us that it's kind of a proof of concept as we go through this that um, there is a demand for our product. And, and if we do things right and really give back to the community and, and, and uh, you know, put others first, uh, that, that our brand will be very successful. And like I said, Trusted Gut, you know, we're, we're dedicated to wellness in all forms. You know, one of the things that, that's important to us is, as I said, we give 5% we give of our net profits back to community-based organizations. So we, we want to, uh, you know, involve ourselves. I'm, like I said, I'm from Long Beach. Um, you know, the, the wellness is so important right now, our physical wellness and that, you know, our, you know, some of the beverages we create, 
you know, they, they have better free benefits with, with, you know, low calorie, you know, gluten-free, low in sugar. And, and so that's important, that physical wellness for all of us, especially during COVID, but not, you know, not only that, but the mental wellness we're all going through right now of being stuck in, in our houses. And, and we believe the brewery will allow you to come in and, you know, cheers with your friends and, and really help out mentally. And then of course, community wellness and supporting everybody in the, you know, in, in our, our local community, not only businesses, but people, those that really chose to trust their gut and, and, and try something a little bit different. Or, you know, as a, as a mother, you know, my wife is downstairs, but, you know, she has to make all sorts of several decisions throughout the day in order, in order to, to raise our kids right. So we really uh, appreciate you know, others and, and our whole foundation of the brand is giving back. So that's kind of kind of about us, if, if that makes sense. And I think, Natalie, you had a little slideshow I put out, um, some renderings. Maybe we can just show the renderings of what the, the building will look like. And maybe, um, you know, the, obviously our brand, you can see our logo. Um, it, that may be familiar to all of you. The logo was based on a, a truly iconic Long Beach uh, lighthouse made into a beer stein. You can see that, um, you know, with uh, water being very important to us, that's all associated in the brand. Uh, trusted gut being one word, not two words, but we all trust our intuition. Um, and, and the the logo itself is is an important, you know, iconic logo. We think is uh, very representative of Long Beach. As we expand the brand outside of Long Beach, uh, those that uh, come to Long Beach will appreciate the, you know, the Parker's Lighthouse. I think it's actually called the. Uh, just the Long Beach Lighthouse now, but the, the lighthouse is an important part of our brand. So the renderings might be the next um, little slide I gave you. That's a little bit about us, just our what I went over. Um, and this is all available to you guys, but we are, you know, surrounded. Our location is kind of the premier brewery location or what we think is the premier brewery location. We're surrounded by popular restaurants, retail, coffee shops. Um, you know, we're two blocks off the beach. We're walking distance for a lot of customers and we want to become a local destination for all of you and somewhere where you guys just want to get away from it all. Um, you'll be able to come to Trusted Gut and, and know that you're welcome at, at any point. Um, the business itself, um, you know, like I said, is 13,000 square feet is the facility. Uh, that's a rendering of what the front will look like uh, as we go through construction uh, throughout the summer. Uh, and, and we have a, a, a pretty significant manufacturing facility, 8,000 square feet, uh, that will house our distribution and our warehousing. We have the annual capacity of 15,000 barrels, just to give you an idea. Um, one barrel equals 31 gallons. So you can kind of do the math of what that looks like, but it's a, it's a heck of a lot of liquid uh, that we'll be able to produce uh, with off-premise distribution. We'll have a canning line uh, where we're, we're able to put product into local, uh, you know, retailers uh, like Gelson's and, you know, grocery stores and uh, liquor stores and, and whatnot. And so we're setting ourselves up to be really something uh, special in Long Beach. And, and that's the way we, we've approached every, every situation, and every, uh, every part of the brand. Um, we have a, a, a three multi beverage strategy. This is kind of uh, an older slide, but you know, hard seltzer, uh, you know, with better for you benefits, as I spoke about using real fruit juice. We have a, a partnership with a local juicery um, that we're using their juice, their actual pressed juice inside of our seltzers. And that's that's a very unique uh, way to flavor your seltzers. Usually it's just an extract that people are pouring into the base. Of, of their seltzers. And instead, we want to actually give you some benefits, some vitamin C, antioxidants and whatnot, then that's going to come through all that real fruit juice. Um, we do beer, great styles, unique styles of ales and lagers, and Matt can speak to all of that. Uh, but we also do hard kombucha, um, you know, gut-friendly, uh, probiotic-based kombuchas. Um, we, we go through a, a extended fermentation process that brings the alcohol level up to about 7%. Um, and all of our liquids that uh, are kind of belong to this trusted triad, we think about uh, and we're, we're very purposeful, purposeful in the ingredients we use. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit about the liquid. This is kind of what the, the location will look like. As I said, uh, it's, you know, it's a it's a retail concept also. So you'll come in and you may see an art installation from your, your favorite local Long Beach artist. 
Um, you'll see, you know, we have the ability to, to do pop-up shops with your favorite stores in Long Beach. And we really want to partner, and we're already partnering uh, with, with so many, but uh, we want to partner with Long Beach-based organizations to begin with, and, and, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, the, the, the tasting room, as you're seeing here, uh, the occupancy is, is is about 200 people, so we'll be able to host a big, you know, big group of people to come in and and, and taste our our liquids. Um, but we're not a bar, and we don't do food. The idea here is that you're coming in to try our liquids, um, to 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 feel out our brand and our retail concept. But we're gonna we'll be closed at 10 p.m. We're we're not gonna be we're gonna push you know our crowd out to the local bar scene if people want to stay out till midnight and drink. We're not going to be that. We're a family-friendly, uh, you know, location. Kids can come in because we're a manufacturer, um, and, and so it, it'll be the vibe will be really nice and thought through. But you're not going to see a big party crowd in there doing shots of tequila. No offense for the, all of us that love shots of tequila, by the way, but th that's not what the atmosphere is, is going to be. It's going to be very purposeful, very inviting, um, and we think it'll be a, a great add added value to the community of Long Beach, and that's. That's kind of kind of our our deal, and and I know uh, I know Dave Dave's idea here of asking some questions, especially to Matt. I think it's great, just about the brewing process. So I'll let those guys take it from here. I'm going to mute myself. Actually, Chris, I have a quick question. Um, are beer shots and hard kombucha shots family friendly? Uh, sure, we'll do tasters, Matt. Okay, and, good. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So, so as we, all right. I, I like the I like the the comedy hour that we're going through here, but the, yeah, we'll do tasters well, and shot glasses for it's you. It's seven thirty p.m. out here for me, guys. <laughs> I apologize. I've I've maybe had a couple more beers than you folks, so <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, look, I'm trying to catch up with you, Matt. Here, so um, awesome, great intro, Chris. Um, for those of you that you know aren't that familiar with the uh, uh, Young Professionals Group, what we try to do is a uh, Every other month, we do a breakfast, and it's like a professional development. So we've done uh, more, most recently. Uh, thank you, Christopher. Uh, we did um, social uh, social media, social media marketing. Uh, before that, we did some negotiation skills, so things like that. Professional development. Every other month, that's not a breakfast. It's something like this. It's a mixer. It's a way for us to get to know each other, know, trust, refer, et cetera, et cetera. And we try to mix it up um, and support local businesses, restaurants, breweries, and things like that. So. Uh, thank you for coming. I've got a bunch of questions for Matt. You ready? We're gonna start ready. with the, we're gonna start with the easy ones, and um, <laughs> and then we're gonna get weird. I promise. So, um, what's the difference between a lager and an ale? Well, so without going down the technical science path of this, this description, um, when I what I like to when I'm speaking across the bar of the tap room, I like to explain things as simple as possible. Um, we've got, we really only have two different styles of beer in the world. We've got lagers and we've got ales. Um, there's a lot of different styles of beer that fall within your ale category. There's also lots of styles that fall within your, your lager category, but for the most part, um, the, the easy, the easy description and, and uh, way to divide them up is your lagers are going to ferment at a lower temperature and they're going to bottom ferment from the bottom up. Your ales ferment usually at a little bit higher temperature from the top down. And so let's say you're drinking a stout. If you're drinking a stout at your local pub, you're drinking an ale. Even though it's called a stout by description, it's actually ale yeast that's fermenting that beer for you. The same with most of your sour ales, most of your IPAs, India Pale Ale is an ale yeast fermenting it. And then you're going to look at, and, and sometimes if you are visiting a brewery, you might see horizontal uh, tanks rather than the tall um, V-shaped conical tanks. The reason that the, the lager tanks use those horizontal tanks is because that bottom feeding yeast is going to have more contact with the liquid in a horizontal tank rather than a, a conical uh, vertical tank. So those usually your, your loggers um, take, you know, a, maybe sometimes a month longer. Uh, they move a lot less, a lot more lethargically um, at much cooler temperatures, but that's, 
when as a brewer we call that the lagering phase that's that phase of letting it sort of sit and maturate over time and it gets that clean and crisp flavors that we're used to from anything from your pbr like whoever has that on their snowboard in the background to uh um to a hellas lager that somebody mentioned um any of those beers um are, are a delicate uh slower process than your vigorous fermenting higher temperature fermenting ales Uh, Ricky Zoom moves. Sorry, I'm on mute. Um, uh, good, thank you. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Nigel. Yeah, thanks, David. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, I can't picture where that space is, Chris. That you had the renderings up. What it like? Where is that? What did it used to be? So I can have like a landmark in my head. <laughs> yeah, it used to be the Oberjerky Auto Repair Facility. So you would never know it's there. You would never. I don't know remember what that was either. But all yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so let, let me give you. Let me give you some uh, some proximity. Uh, you know Broadway Video. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know Headhunters. Yeah. yeah. We're right next door to Headhunters. Keeping if you're going down Redondo, we run all the way along the uh, the alley. And in fact, I'll pull up in a minute. I'll pull up a. Uh, and try to share my screen, but I'll pull up a, 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 a top-down shot of it. But essentially, we're, we're, we run all the way down the alley, off Redondo, all the way to the attic parking lot. The attic parking lot for the attic, if you know the attic, was actually yeah. our, our parking lot. And the attic is our food partner for the brewery. So when you come in, I said earlier that we don't do food. Uh, we actually are supporting the local businesses around, of, uh, around us and uh, allowing them to cater and or order direct, um, you know, out of our brewery to, to come and deliver food. So the attic is a perfect example, but we, you would never know the size of the building unless you, you got your car fixed there. We converted an old auto repair facility or we're in the middle of converting it into a, into a brewery. So be, before, you it's know, after, Broadway Media, the brewery. after the headhunters, before Paps and Kenny uh, is our, our building. Matt, what were you gonna say? I was saying that's it's actually uh, it's ironically um, a, a bit of a common trend in the in the craft uh, beer world, I guess you would say. A lot of the smaller small batch brewers, um, you'll find um, coming into some old repair shops such as this, old warehouse space, um, revitalizing a lot of areas uh, around the, the 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 world, but especially you know a lot of example here in the U.S. Um, I, my first project here in uh, Pennsylvania was an old Chevy car dealership. So um, I, I hope that that maybe inspired Chris for this location. Uh, but we also love the food in the in the back, uh, you know, like dipping over to Attic and, and we, we do lunch um, around the corner. Like it's just such a perfect uh, couple blocks right there that, you know, I even like Reno Room when it gets a little later. But, you know, hey, uh, that's for those shots of tequila later. Yeah. And we're supporting not only that, but we're supporting, I mean, you know, beyond the attic, um, you know, where the, the, the Firkin that is now in the old DJ Malloy's, you know, they're going to provide food for us, uh, the Olive's grocery store. So we're, we're really leaning into the local food providers um, instead of uh, ne not necessarily we won't do this in the future, but instead of focusing on food trucks to come to the brewery instead we're, we're, we're located in a, such a, such a, a you know, a, such a great area that has so many great restaurants. Why not focus on those restaurants and, and, and really utilize what they do best? Yeah, that's cool. Remember, and I can yeah. get food from the attic without having to wait for an hour and a half. That's, that's great. right. So, so we will have, <laughs> just as an example, we have, uh, we've already done the menu um, or at least the start of it. Um, and we have, you know, five to seven items that you'll be able to order directly through our beer tenders. And the attic, it'll go directly into the attic kitchen, the food order, and the attic uh, servers will bring it over and deliver it right to you in the, in the brewery. So you may not have to wait an hour and, and uh, you know, you'll get your food. My second, so, my so second question. Oh, God, God. Second question. What the heck is kombucha? Uh, what is that? <laughs> kombucha is a tea. So it's a fermented tea. And so, so there's live probiotics. Essentially, it's a... Uh, all kombuchas right now is uh, are it's tea based, 
And all, all kombuchas have a little slight bit of alcohol. And uh, we, we just take them into a, uh, the, the next realm of alcohol through the fermentation process of, of, of making the alcohol value about, uh, about 7%, 65 to 7%. It's, it's a very similar process to how your sour beers are made um, as far as the bacteria that are used to create those, uh, the acidity levels and uh, the lactic uh, flavors that come off of the, uh, the uh, I mean, it, it's, it sounds gross, but we're, we're putting bacteria in these beers. It's good bacteria. It's all your probiotics. It's like, uh, it's like eating, you know, five different, uh, Greek yogurts, if you will. I got it. So, so are they generally as sour as like the average sour beer I, I've had? Not as sour. It, it is. Um, pH levels come down to the same as like your manufa your um, your non wild sours. So, um, all sour beers are are wild as far as we're adding bacteria, but. If you deal with a spontaneous fermentation that would be brewed out of what we call a cool ship, which if you went over to uh, Beechwood at the blendery, you would see that they have some cool ship and different blending barrels and things like that that they're letting uh, exposed to just the natural um, yeasts and bacteria that are floating around in the air. Um, those wild fermentations, those spontaneous fermentations are always gonna get a, 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 to a, a little bit funkier a little bit more acidic level than our lab bacterias, which are much more under control. And we can gauge and replicate certain pH levels to deliver you the same flavor over and over again. That's right. And then how, depending on how we're flavoring and adding into the kombucha flavors, we'll, we'll give you the, the, the sourness. As an example, if we're doing, and Dave can tell you, you tried one of our watermelon mint kombuchas. Um, that was absolutely, I think it's Dave, what do you think? Perfect. That's all I had. I'll throw yeah. it back to Dave with his off the wall questions. Uh, no, no, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it simple for uh, a couple more. Um, uh, and then we'll get weird. We got to start civil. Good, but good questions. Um, right off the bat, I said in the chat already. If you haven't seen it, um, if you have a question, raise your hand. I'll try to monitor that. Um, a tear is raising her hand. What's a that? A tear is raising her hand. <laughs> I've been raising it for a little bit. Okay, go for it, Atira. Uh, I was just curious uh, if you can share who is your local partner for the juices for your spritzers? I, I can absolutely share, um, and, and you probably know them. Um, Angela from Salud. Mm -hmm. So we've been working with Angela and her, her partner for months but yeah salute juice and and again we can share that as you know like again this group and i know it's being recorded um but we're we're open also to to other other ways to flavor but we wanted to choose a partner locally to to help us through this process and and uh and they were a great candidate and we absolutely support their business and they're doing a great job uh you know in both of their locations and and they're they're uh they're they're a great partner so far I love it. I love the fact that you're partnering with so many local small businesses. That's that's what we got to do. Yeah, it's it's important. That's I mean, being from Long Beach, um, you know, and especially right now with the the current atmosphere with small business going out of business, you know, it it, it really those that trusted their gut, and I know it's kind of you know, it's a, it's, it's a funny, funny way to say it, but those that really made that decision to start a business, it's so darn hard to get a business going, um, you know, and, and so we want to do what we can to not, not impede on their business, especially in that little Belmont Heights neighborhood. We don't want to do food because that would, that would just be a competitor. Instead, let's, let's produce beer and let's produce kombucha and let's produce hard seltzer and add value to that neighborhood and and try not to compete instead lift everybody up and we do the same we have a partnership with a um a, a organization called path um and i won't i won't call it a, a formal partnership i'll call it we're working with them uh, path is people assisting the homeless and and the the you know a part of our our work with them all all goes back to we want to we want to provide a um a road map for those that at one point were homeless and got skill training to, to come out and, and have an opportunity to come to work somewhere. 
we want to be that opportunity. And so we're doing everything we can on our end to work with different organizations through the city. Um, but they're, they're one of the organizations that we're really highlighting and, and, and pushing on as, a, as an example of how we want to give back. Like I said, we're, we're really dedicated. And, and this is not just saying this is the truth of how we run the business, um, you know, dedicated to, to all forms of wellness. We're our value statement of the brand, if we're going to call about a value, it'd be guided by a higher health consciousness. So we really think about the way we um, and are purposeful and what we do and who we partner with and what we put into our liquids and who I bring on as brewers and, and collaborators and, and why I would do, uh, you know, a meeting for the Long Beach Chamber of Commerce Young Professionals. You know, you guys are, you know, your up and coming professionals, if not already there. And, and I feel like this is a great networking opportunity for you to learn a little bit about us before we even open and hopefully you'll take, you know, take one or two things from, from what Matt has said about brewing beer and, and go back and go, God, I can't wait for that place to open. I'm going to, you know, come in and support us. And that's all we can ask. Chris, Chris, if I can piggyback that real fast. I mean, let's, let's back up a, a bit on the history of this craft beer. I guess we still call it a revolution here, but craft beer is here to stay, obviously. And, and let's back up to the early mid 90s when craft beer was really exploding in the U.S. And, we're, and it wasn't even called craft beer until we called it craft beer because we had these big macro brands like our Budweiser's and our Coors and our Miller brands. And when the small brewers started to, to establish themselves, it was always about the small mom and pa shop and the community. It was always about how can we tie in because you have to you have to think we're an agricultural industry. We're using we're using cereal grains. We're malting those those grains. Somebody's there's a there's a maltster out there that's doing that. The brewers then um, mashing and, and, and fermenting and and packaging and sharing across the bar in a pub atmosphere and bringing the community together to have that conversation at the end of the day. So there's so many um, puzzle pieces that make the beer that you hold in your hand happen. And that involves a great deal of the community from lots of different places that you wouldn't expect in industry and, and, and business. So um, there's, there's, a ton of, there's a ton of contributing factors that gets that pint poured for you at happy hour for your next, uh, you know, your next young professionals uh, networking gathering, like take take a look at the glass and think about, it's not just the brewery that, that did that work. There was farmers involved. There's farmers taking our spent grain. And I, um, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. It's um, at Atria. I, I know I made a silk Jersey comment earlier. I'm sorry, I love Jersey. I'm drinking a New Jersey beer right now. <laughs> Double nickel okay, from yeah, from Penn yeah, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking across <laughs> the river right now. I see. I see your Jersey. Your Jersey fam over there. But like double nickel, for example, is one of is a prime example of a brewery in Pensac in New Jersey that they are bringing their grain in from local farms, uh, mostly Delaware and Pennsylvania. They're they're malting it. They're 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 using it to make their beer, and then the spent grains going to local farmers to feed pigs and cattle. And then it's going to provide you a hamburger. Um, it, it's a full circle world, and there's so many things that contribute throughout the community to make all the cool beers, kombuchas, and seltzers that we're all going to be uh, sharing together soon. And I and and I was just joking about Jersey. <laughs> nice. Uh, Pagemon, you got a question? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, well, I, I think I speak for all of us when I say I can't wait uh, for you guys to open and have our uh, uh, Long Beach professional event there. That'll be fun. But uh, Chris, I'm sorry uh, if I missed it when you were initially talking. I know you said it's kind of up in the air with, with an opening date. There's a lot uh, that's going into it right now. Do you have a one, first question is do you have like a general kind of uh, timeline? And then uh, my second question was, were you guys uh, – one, be only uh, having your stuff on tap there, or are you going to also be putting some uh, like local brews on tap as well yeah. from other breweries around? Yeah, good, good. Two really good questions. The first answer is I'll, I'll, I'll say this I used to put a date on it all the time. 
And then I started working with the realities of, of, of Long Beach and the complexities of opening a business. Um, and, and so what I will say is we will be open in 2021. Okay. Yeah, uh, fair enough. I, I would, we will be brewing beer here shortly. As Matt said, he's going to be making a trip out here uh, as our, our, you know, we're, we're, we're in active construction. So we, we hope to be brewing, uh, you know, late summer in, in the facility. Um, the tap room itself, to be completely honest with you, we're we're trying to to gauge how all of you feel about coming indoors and and being being indoors for a facility. You know, we're mainly indoors. Um, we won't have a a big park led. You know, that's not the plan right now. We will have a parking lot that we will set up uh, in collaboration with the attic for a beer garden. Um, but the reality is that we will be indoors, and it's a, a very challenging atmosphere right now with the the state and 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 a lot of the city municipalities in order to uh, to accommodate capacity. So. All of those are kind of contributing factors to what we have um, and, and going on, but we're actively uh, working to get it open. Um, the second question was about uh, about different different breweries and different 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 liquids that are going to be on drafts, and we'll be doing a lot of collaborations. We have the um, the amount of space uh, and, and capacity to do all sorts of collaborations with different breweries locally, um, and 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 be able to feature their 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 liquids alongside of our. Now, our license uh, represents anything that we produce, we will be selling. Um, and that's, as an example, if we were um, brewing the BBC collaboration, we would be selling that that directly. So is that, does that answer your, your, your question? Yeah, no, definitely. I and mean, then that was part of the reason I, I, I know the last couple of years, a lot of uh, local breweries have popped up in Long Beach, which is awesome. And, you know, love, love to attend a lot of them. I see a lot of them work together. Um, you know, on collaboration. So yeah, it all, it's pretty excited to. You and, know. And, and let me let me make sure that we all understand the difference of kind of what we're creating. Um, a brew pub is what a majority of the, the breweries are in, in in Long Beach, and there's a restaurant concept associated with that. And a lot of times, a brew pub will have the ability to do uh, different wine selections or even sometimes different spirit selections. Um, we're creating a manufacturing actual a brewery, more like. 10 mile in Signal Hill, you know, is a, is a perfect example. I mean, if, if you've been there or Brewery West in San Pedro. Um, and again, the, the most important thing here, and Matt, I love the sunset as it goes down. The most important thing that um, is, is what Matt is trying to convey is that we are all independent and we're all small businesses and your support um, is the community support is so important right now for, for all of us to, to generate the, you know, not only the confidence to open, um, the, the, you know, the, the uh, ability to, to stay in business. You know, the COVID has put, you know, 30% of restaurants out of business right now. And, and it's a really, really sad, sad, uh, you know, sad what has happened over the last year. And hopefully 2021, at the end of 21 and 22, it'll still be choppy. But we're forecasting a little bit of normalcy for 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 this industry and 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 whatnot. Chris, I just um, want to add, we will be getting some beer out to other establishments before the tap rooms open, though. Via, um, we're, we're going to be we're going to be getting some some beers uh, packaged and out to distribution in the local area. So even though the tap room might not be opening immediately, you are going to start seeing TG beers, kombuchas, seltzers in the marketplace. That's right. Matt, Matt's, Matt's absolutely right. So we, we will be distributing. We're starting already, um, but through, you know, through our uh, manufacturing partners until our manufacturing is up, you'll start to see our beers more in the, in, in the market.